I love Walthamstow so much, probably because I've grown up fishing here, um, but because I do love the, the, the day style of angling. Um, getting down there, everyone's in the same boat. If you make the effort to get up in the morning um, and get on that gate first thing, you get the swim you want to and you make the most of the time you're here. And I find that more exciting than sitting on the lake for, for 48 hours. I haven't fished here much this year, so I managed to get down yesterday for a bit of a recce. Um, I fished four different swims in the morning um, and ended up in this one. I caught one of on my right hand rod about half one in the afternoon and I lost one about an hour later. So it was a brilliant, brilliant place for me to start today. I made sure I got in nice and early on the gate this morning, so I made sure I get back in this swim, um, because if not, I'll have been fuming sitting somewhere else, thinking somebody else was gonna catch the fish that I should have caught today. So that's the first thing I've done was get here nice and early. I walked around into this swim and put the rod straight back out onto the spot where I caught the fish yesterday. That was my right hand rod that you can see in the background there. Um, I'm fishing it nice and tight up against an island. There's a little bush and I'm sliding down the side of that. It's probably only a foot or two off the island. And my second rod, which is the middle rod, is also up against the island, not quite as tight, um, but I put it out there because I saw a fish show there this morning. There's a, a sort of really dark green bush and it jumps about four foot off the island. So I took note of exactly where that was and that's where that middle rod went. And my left hand rod, I've, I've swung that out in open water, it's nowhere near the island. Um, I've put that out at 16 wraps just because I know from past catches that that's where, where I've caught fish from. Um, it's slightly deeper out there, it's probably only four or five foot deep, but the rest of the lake's only three foot. So um, that seemed like a good place as any to start with that left hand rod. Um, I've put a little bit of bait around each one. Because it's November though, I haven't put too much out, probably 10 or 15 baits around each rod. Um, and hopefully that'll encourage them to, to, to get myself a bite. So my plan is to stay in this swim all day today. Um, it'll be silly for me to move out any time before I had the bites yesterday, which was sort of one, two o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm gonna stick it out and see what happens. From turning up in the morning, because you've got such a short amount of time, you've got to make the most of it. So in the winter, it's not some, you, you're not moving so much because the action's less. You've got to stick it out in swims a little bit longer um, to warrant moving after because if you set up in the winter for two hours you can't move um, if you haven't caught one because they might be there they're just that you haven't gone through the feeding time yet so um, in the summer I'd be moving probably every hour and a half two hours um, and because the fish are more active you can see whether they're in your swim or not um, but in the winter that's not happening so much so um, I'll stick it out a little bit longer in the swims um, and, and hopefully see out some, some time of action. Right, well, bite time's been and gone here. And luckily, because I've got the crew here, I've been able to have a walk up onto the two and have a little look. And while I was down there, I've seen a couple of fish in an empty swim. So I'm gonna pack up as quick as humanly possible and set up in my new swim. Walthamstow really suits me because it is days. I prefer doing the short sessions. So you're really making the most of your fishing. Instead of fishing for 48 hours where you know, people relax and sit down and you've got a few nights to think about it, when you're here, you're trying to make the most of it. So you're moving swims, you're trying to find the fish, and I think that makes you a better angler. I suppose it's like the effort you put in before, the effort you put in before you come fishing, the getting up early, the thinking about it constantly sitting in the freezing cold for hours and then when that alarm goes it's that's the reason you were there you know well <laughs> we got round here in super quick time and no sooner have I put I haven't even put my bank sticks in yet and my left hand rods away exactly where I saw the fish when I come back round it just goes to show how, how important it is that you can move quickly You'll have noticed that I had hardly had anything on my barra. I didn't even pack the rods down, got them on the barra and got round here in super quick time. It just goes to show how really, really important it is to make sure on these short day sessions that you've got your rods in the right place for as much time as possible. So even though I've got an hour and a half probably in this swim, made the effort, oh, he's trying to get that snag around there. Made the effort to get round here and it's paid off straight away. So many times this has happened to me. I can feel it touching the branches. We'll talk about the rigs another time, but you'll notice that the heli safe there has dropped the lead, so I'm in direct contact with the fish. 
See it coming out of the water. And I'll fight for November, I tell you. the moment I hate. Go on, go in the net, please. Yes! Now that is a result after a quick move. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, I, I really enjoy winter fishing. Um, it's harder, obviously, because the fish aren't so active, um, but holding a carp in freezing cold conditions, uh, you know, far beats anything in the summer. Well, that is an absolute result for November. Just goes to show that if you find fish, especially in the winter showing, you've got to make the effort and move on to them because this can be the result. I caught them on a pineapple wafter, just a single out there in the silt. They work so well, they do. I've got absolute confidence in them. I am over the moon with that. I'm going to slip him back, see if I'm catching up one in a bit. Mwah. Oh, he's gone. What a cracking fish. What a cracking fish. Walthamstow is my favourite place. I grew up fishing here from when I was about 15, 16 years old. Um, first come down here and sort of just fell in love with the place from then really. I've fished here probably every year since then. It's completely different to all of the other venues around the country just because it's right in the centre of London. Um, 10 metres away you've got lights flashing from police cars and loads of traffic about and that's not something you get elsewhere. which is really well throughout the winter. You can come down any time and, and uh, catch a good fish. If you've got a day's fishing, which is all I've got a week generally, sort of the Saturday, um, I can come down and, and, and fish for the day and expect to catch one. Whereas elsewhere, you've got to set up for 48 hours before you know, you've know you got a chance of getting a fish. Well, good morning. Um, got it back here nice and early. It's been pouring down the rain since I got here about half six this morning. Um, but I've made sure I get it nice and early to get back in the same swim. We fished for probably another two hours after I caught that fish last night. But the light was fading, the gate was going to close, so I ended up having to get out the gate. So um, the main thing is, is that I've got it nice and early to get back in this swim. The fish were in here last night, the wind's, the wind's similar sort of direction, so there's no reason for the fish to have moved. So it's a great starting point, and that's something that I would definitely do on the walks near you if you're going out doing day fishing, is to make sure you get back in the same peg that you caught fish the day before and it gives you a little bit of a one-upmanship on, um, on the rest of the guys. So I'm going to get my rods out. I'm probably going to put one up against the island like I did yesterday. I didn't catch anything on that, um, but it's always worth a shout nice and tight to the island. It's a spot that I've caught from before. The left-hand rod's going to go out in open water where I had the bite, um, and then my middle rod's going to go sort of down the side of the island in open water um, where I saw some fish yesterday. So without further ado, I'm going to get my rods out and see if I can catch one. Well, now I've got the rods out and they're all settled, I thought I'd uh, just take a moment to take you through my bank stick setup. Um, I've got the Delkin TXIZ, I've used them for seven or eight years now, they never ever let you down. Um, I have them on sort of two or three sensitivity, and uh, I pretty much get away with that everywhere now in the summer or the winter. Um, you'll notice a slight change as well with my, um, my Elstow bobbins. Um, they're slightly thinner, these ones, and we've changed the little clip on the outside, we've just put a little metal insert in there so the clip doesn't bend. Oh the wind um, so the clip doesn't bend out and you end up not being able to push your, um, your line in so they've slightly changed they're updated um, next is the signet 2020 bank sticks they're aluminium lightweight um, they look good as well don't they so this is a stage stand part here it makes it really easy to move when you're dating and fishing with the platforms all you have to do is is I'll keep all of this set up um, I'll take the bank stick out it's a small six inch bank stick um, just so it keeps it nice and low to the platform I'll take that out and inside a screw that goes through a hole in the bottom, you get yourself a Phillips screwdriver and then just screw it into the platform. I've probably got them two or three foot apart so you get a nice splay with these three rod buzz bars. So it's a nice, quick and easy setup for anywhere you're fishing on platforms.
Well, the rigs have been out for a few hours now, so I've just decided to reel that one in and have a little rechuck. And it's something I do quite often when I'm fishing day sessions, is to, to reel in, freshen up, put a new bait on and cast it back out. Maybe try a different spot than I had it out before, because it's been out there a few hours and I hadn't had a bite. It's always worth just redoing it just to make sure it's sitting right. And I'm not fishing much bait out there today anyway, so there's no need to you know, worry about having to put bait out and scaring the fish away. It's one cast, it's quick and easy. It can often get you another bite. Um, so while I've reeled in as well, I'll show you the rig I've got. Because it's so silty out there, I've opted for a helicopter setup and not the normal leg clip setup. And by that, I mean the swivel and the hook links on the lead core, and it slides all the way up to the top to a buffer bead that's probably a foot and a half above my lead. And that way I've got really good presentation when the lead goes into the silt and the hook link can sit on top nice for a bite. The hook link is a combi setup and because it's sliding up the lead core, it doesn't have to be really soft like I'd fish it on a, on a lead clip. So that's pretty stiff that is, it's probably about 30 or 40 pound that fluorocarbon. And I've crimped a little loop in the end and then I've got a little loop to loop section of soft supernatural um, to a size six crank and then the uh, little tiny pineapple goo on the end there. You notice on the end there I've got a little heli safe clip and that just allows me to drop the lead when the fish is on the end. You won't drop it on normal fishing when you're just reeling in like free weed or anything. Only when there's tension on this end do you pull it and the lead just shakes off like that. And that allows me obviously to drop the lead when there's weed about. Um, and I, to be honest, I, I prefer to drop it when I can really, just so I've got direct contact with the fish, you end up losing less. And I'm coupling that with probably three to four foot of lead core, just to make sure I've beefed up the end tackle, I don't get any nicks in the line, and it's safer that way when you've got the line, uh, the swivel running up and down the line. Um, so that's that rig. Um, I've got them on both of my left and middle rod that are fishing out on the silty areas, just to make sure I've got that good presentation. But on my right hand rod that I'm fishing up against the island, I know it's really clay there and gravelly, so there's no need to fish that sort of setup. So I've got a slightly shorter hook link on that one. It's exactly the same, a little combi, um, but just the fluorocarbon is just slightly shorter on that. So I've got direct contact with the, with the lead when the fish picks the bait up. So they're my rigs. I'm going to uh, change the bait on this one and get it back out. People often ask me why I like fishing so much, and I guess it is weird for somebody that doesn't, um, doesn't like fishing themselves. But to be honest, it's just nice to get away from it all. You've got a busy life, busy job, um, and to get away on a Saturday and spend some time outside um, in pursuit of something that you know you, you love doing, catching the fish, um, it's just, just nice to get out to be honest. Right, well it's coming to the end of the day now, no bites as yet, but it's, um, it's sort of bite time at the minute, so hopefully in the next hour or something we can get something. But I just wanted to take the time out just to talk about bait. Um, you'll have noticed that I wouldn't have put much out throughout the day while I've been here, or yesterday really. Um, I do bring some free bait with me, I bring this cell here. Um, I use it everywhere throughout the summer and the winter, um, but I've only been putting it out at night when I leave. So they're eating it throughout the night and then when I get here in the morning, I can cast out uh, most of the bait's gone and hopefully I can get a bite straight away. Um, hook baits wise, these are my get out of jails. These are the mainline um, IB wafters and the IB pop-ups and I've just laced them in pineapple goo. They're extremely high attract um, and I just catch on them everywhere. So, for people that have got 400 pots of pop-ups with different, different flavours, different colours, this and that, what you're better off doing is sticking to one that you know, something that you're confident in, and something that you can catch on in winter and the summer. Um, these I'd use more in the winter. Uh, in the summer, I'd probably use a cell on the hook. Um, but when you're fishing in the winter, you want a really high attract hook bait so you can get a bite without putting much bait out at all. And hopefully that will catch you a fish or two throughout the winter. I think for, for me and like most other carp anglers, the time when you feel like you've got it all right and everything you've done in, in advance has worked is when that buzzer goes. And that is the most exciting part about carp fishing. Um, obviously you want to land the fish um, and it's brilliant when you get it in the net and you see what you've caught. Um, but that moment when the buzzer goes, that's, that's the time. Well, as you can see, the light's fading. It is last knockings. I think a lot of people would have reeled in by now to miss the traffic. <laughs> but on these day sessions, you've got to make sure that your rods are in the water as long as possible and they're the last things you pack away. Because this can happen. <laughs> this is such a great venue for winter fishing. The fish is like this all the way through the winter. If you make the effort to make sure you're on the fish at the right time, and all your tactics are right, you can get bites. For some reason, they mean so much more in the winter. 
I've got a big snag to my right hand side and they always kite right in here. I really just don't want it to get caught in that. I can feel it touching branches. Come out. No. I think he's out. That's better. So on that helicopter rig we were talking about earlier with a goo bait over just a really small amount of bait that I put out earlier. And I'd put some out the night before, but very little amount still. So when they do turn on for the 20 minutes of feeding, you can get yourself a bite. I was lucky to get him out of that, out of that tree, but he's just under my rod tip now, hopefully. It can go in the net. Either way, it's been a bit of a result the last couple of days. It's very important, no matter what time of year, that you're confident in what you're doing. But what I said earlier about the baits, to make sure that you're confident in what you've put out, sitting there behind three confident rods is completely different to worrying about what you've put out, thinking that you haven't got the right thing on. But when you've got something like the pineapple goo that I'm completely confident in, as soon as the fish turn up, you think you're going to get a bite, and somehow that converts into actually catching them. Confidence is key. Right, this fish looks like it's had it now, it's a little common. Please go in there. That is an absolute result. Oh, don't let him get out. Well, that is a brilliant way to end a couple of days at Wolverhamstone Reservoirs in the middle of November. 21 pound, 14 ounce common, just to finish my day. I hope you've picked up a few bits over the last couple of days just to help you go out and catch yourself a winter carp. I'm gonna get this one back and get out of the gate in time. Beautiful. <laughs>